Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted anything, but I decided I would actually make a quick little video here uh, just to kind of reintroduce the whole topic of cannabis and the cannabis industry, something that before I was kind of coming from a place of just experiencing the industry as a consumer, a patient, a customer, all that jazz. However, now I've actually had a real industry experience. I've worked for a company called Seed and Smith, uh, which is actually a fully licensed, vertically integrated cannabis operation, which includes a grow, extraction lab, dispensary, and whole logistics team. So it's a really Really, really interesting experience that it taught me a lot about things in the industry that maybe I wasn't so keen to just from the outside looking in uh, and some things that I really kind of didn't expect and we'll talk about that throughout the series of videos that I'll produce uh, but I thought I'd just dive back into education today so well, let's do it real quick as you can see from the title the topic of today's video is cartridges versus pods So a lot of people are familiar with what cartridges are or carts as some people refer to them, vapes, whatever have you. Uh, they're the standard ones that you screw into a 510 threaded variable voltage battery or just a battery that has a 510 threading. What's cool about those is they're pretty universal. They have batteries around all over the country. Um, there's no need to really find anything proprietary for it. Plus you can even use like a box mod for your vaporizer. Um, I'll actually show you guys what one looks like right now. All right, so as mentioned, this is a cartridge. This is from Seed & Smith. It's uh, Blackwater, which is Mendo Perps cross with San Fernando Valley OG, so a real heavy one if you're looking for some relaxation or if you take a few too many hits, definitely a sleeper for sure. Uh, and this is what the variable voltage battery looks like, where actually in this case, it's just a 510 battery because there is no variable voltage. It just automatically outputs to, I believe, a higher setting. Uh, what's very interesting about the cartridges that we have at Seed & Smith is that we only use cannabis terpenes to flavor, whereas some places, um, they'll fill it with distillate, which is pretty common. Like everybody knows what that is. It's just pure THC. However, then they'll add things to it like flavoring, artificial things that really weren't derived from the cannabis plant, or in some cases, in very extreme cases, in terms of the negative, they'll add vitamin E acetate or MCT oil, things that are really not, not supposed to be entered into your lungs or not supposed to be vaporized um, at all. So this is just terpenes and distillate THC. The cool thing about this also is, kind of as I was mentioning before, this battery is very universal. You can screw it into a mod that you have from like vaping or pretty much just buy these at any smoke shop, which I think is a huge convenience for this product. And really where the industry was, was just pushing these. Now, what's interesting is there's kind of a shift away from distillate in the industry. A lot of people are kind of opening their eyes to what distillate really is. And I, I hate to say it, but especially from an insider's perspective, I'm not saying Stephen Smith did this, but just talking to people that have worked in MIPS or labs in the industry, uh, distillate's often made from the undesirable stuff that you don't really want. You know, maybe some trim you have lying around. Maybe it was a batch of shatter that didn't really come out great. Send it straight to distillate is, is a common phrase with the extractors when something doesn't come out quite to par in, in the industry. So people are becoming a little bit more keen on that. You know, distillate's typically not the best quality of cannabis because if it was the best quality, you probably wouldn't be uh, turning it into a distillate. And that's just kind of the, the sad truth of it. Uh, so a lot of people are switching to these live resin cartridges, which I haven't tried to be 100% honest with you, or maybe, maybe I did it at like an event or something, but I've never gone out and purchased a purely live resin cartridge that didn't have distillate at all incorporated into it. I've tried cartridges that were flavored with live terpenes, which we'll talk about in a moment here, but they don't quite have the same, I guess, full spectrum quality or perhaps the same flavor profile as these uh, live resin cartridges. Uh, if you're in Colorado, I'd recommend picking them up just to, just to try if you haven't before. If they're fairly reasonably, reasonably priced when they're actually coming down uh, with, you know, the more increased demand or more, more increased supply, I should say, uh, as well as demand. But the other thing that's now becoming a little bit more common is the rosin cartridges or live rosin cartridges. I know a company called DabLogic does completely solventless cartridges, which is pretty cool, but right now I couldn't recommend it because rosin's just a, a little too pricey. In the, in the legal industry, a little, a little too pricey. And I purely mean that like, if you just had a grow of your own, you could press rosin for so much cheaper. I, I know that's <laughs> that's kind of a big if, but you know, just to be a consumer spending 80 to $100 on a gram of rosin versus, you know, a gram of just cured resin for like 20 bucks, it's it's kind of a hard sell, especially especially now where the industry's at, where in Colorado prices are definitely decreasing. Um, well, they were historically, not sure how COVID's impacting that, but a lot, a lot more on that later.
Let's just jump right back into it though. Let's talk about pods real quick. I'm just a second, I'm gonna flip it over and show you what it looks like. Uh, but first, let me show you the device kind of in my hand and just give you perspective on that. This is the C-Cell Dart battery. So when we first started selling these at my location, a lot of the bud tenders thought that it was proprietary technology, that this was only gonna be exclusive to, to our, our facility or to our dispensary. However, that is not correct. Huh? No, not even close to correct. Uh, C-Cell is a company that's been making those variable voltage batteries or cartridge tools or hardware for as long as I can remember being in the industry. Uh, this just kind of their push to switch over. Sorry, my hat fell. Uh, this is kind of their push to uh, switch over to something new. Uh, so let me show you real quick. I'm going to dive into this real heavy. A lot to kind of explore here. All right. So this is the Dart battery. Um, from C cell as mentioned, it's pretty nice to use a micro USB charger Cartridges from a 510 thread have to have a special attachment that you know Sometimes you can lose one not not that they're expensive, but it's just nice to have a micro USB Which is really universal. So it's actually a magnet that holds this into place. So just give me a second All right. So it's a magnet that holds it into place and this is what the pods look like ours is branded um, the oil goes in on two sides it's kind of hard to see let me see if i can get you a better perspective all right so in the middle is kind of this wheel like apparatus or at least something that threads the oil through not that i'm the most engineering savvy so maybe someone out there is like what is he talking about uh but basically oil gets filled on two different sides of the partition and then it's able to really draw it at a much much greater volume in terms of the vapor production and the oil uh, than let's say a cartridge and largely because this is a more powerful battery and not to mention that it's just more more efficient in its design so my biggest pro about this and the, the thing i like the most about this is the fact that it really can deliver those really rich almost dab rig like hits you know sometimes Vapes are not really going to cut it. Um, one of them, my friends used to say that he, vapes keep him medicated, but they don't get him medicated. It's like he'll need like a joint or a dab just to, to get where he wants to be. But then in order to sustain that, he can use a cartridge. But if he's trying to just get high from, you know, square one, it's going to take a long time of pulling on that cartridge to really give an effect, him an effect, if any. I fairly agree with that. I've, I've advised customers and patients similarly that, you know, perhaps maybe use the vape as a way to just sustain your high, not to really get high. Because I've definitely had moments where I was uh, chugging on the vape, you know, just uh, really, uh, <laughs> really going hard on it to, to get that, that high. And it just took a long time. And I almost like smoked through a quarter of the quarter of the cartridge. Uh, so the, my biggest pro about it is it gives you that really quick, that, that, that fast hit. It's like taking a, a deep breath, a deep dab, just real nice, real, real flavorful and a real rich vapor production. Like we we're talking about. Now, the other thing I like about this too is it's very discreet. I've literally brought this to concerts and I probably shouldn't have said anything, but I've been like, oh, it's the fob for my, my car. I, I probably didn't even need to say that. Cause if you look, it's really like anything <laughs> that you would suspect, or especially now with the Enjoys and the salt nicotine pods, this really is kind of becoming just more universal, which I can only speculate, but I'm pretty sure Smock, or sorry, not Smock, uh, C-Cell decided to go to the pod system because places like, you know, Smock and other big vapor pr producers or hardware producers were finding that it was a little bit more uh, efficient to switch to pods, especially for the salt-based system, I would say, and that's, I'm not an insider on that industry, so that could be wrong, um, but it was also just something that was becoming a lot more popular. So that's pretty cool. You don't really know what it is. Uh, now the cons. All right, so let's talk about the biggest con that everyone has with the Dart, or at least it seems like they have with the Dart, and I've heard this from countless customers at the dispensary. It wastes oil. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, I, I can't really lie to you there. It's a higher output battery. So just by the sheer nature of what it's designed to do, you're, you're going to be able to take bigger hits and thus you're going to use more of the oil. Now, ultimately, it's not really the fault of the hardware, the oil manufacturer, anyone on the production end. It's just the consumer because, quite frankly, you don't need to be smoking that much. And if you kind of notice, I was being a little kind of sending there because, hey, I recognize it too. I don't really like it um, because I can go through pods absurdly fast like very very fast uh, I would say a pod might only last me like two days if I'm like really trying to get super lit off it or if it's like my only means of smoking two days pretty much pretty much tops it out the other thing that I've noticed too is that these pods 
they do waste oil. You get a little bit of oil stuck in the corners, at least like a hit or two's worth. I'm not saying like by any means is anyone gonna like lose their mind over it or bring it back and say that it's a defective product. Never had that experience, but, but it is something to keep in mind. You know, if you're very conservative with your bud or your THC, maybe not the best product for you. Also, I would say that kind of on a side note going off all this, something like this could definitely, you know, increase your tolerance because you're just vaping more where with the cartridges, you're kind of limited to the lower uh, output. So maybe, just maybe, because you're liking this so much, you'll find that you're not only using it more, but spending more money on it and kind of seeking it more. So that probably isn't a huge concern, but I, I just throw that out there because I, there was a period of time where, man, I was going through like five darts a week or five pods a week. And when you're not a, an employee at the dispensary, that's a, not a very practical thing to do, not a very... Uh, <clears throat> Not a very cool goal to work towards, uh, but I digress on that one. So overall, when it comes to the difference between pods and cartridges, it kind of just comes down to your preference. Do you want something that has a little bit more of the universal appeal, something that's a little bit lighter, something that's going to be a little bit more, I don't know, something a little bit more just conventional, then go for the cartridge. That's going to be kind of the way of the past. But here's the thing I would say about the, the pod, which I didn't mention in my pros, but I kind of wanted to give a little lecture on this. I firmly believe that this is the future. I told that to all my customers. I think everybody's going to switch over to these pods eventually. Every manufacturer or producer in the cannabis industry. Uh, C-Cell's really pushing it hard. I know 14 the cannabis company, has it. Uh, I'm fairly certain the clinic's going to get it too if they don't already have it. Terrapin has it. So there, there's a lot of people that are adopting this. And I think it's going to become something that's much more universal in the sense that you can go to any smoke shop in the country and find a, find a dart battery. Plus, I, I would probably assume that the prices are going to drop pretty significantly over the next year or two, depending on how the market looks. So I would say the pod is really great if you're looking, if you're somebody who likes to get in early and likes to really be someone that invests in something that's going to be really big. You know, you want to be like the first to get it. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's a great pro to it. It's much more discreet, much more powerful. If you're looking for like really deep dab hits, like that'll get you to that nice level you're, you want to be at. Maybe the pot is something to consider. So that's my honest feedback on it. Right now I'm taking a little bit of a tolerance break, so I'm not really gonna use them right now. Uh, <laughs> it's just kinda, kinda crazy. But in future videos, I'll definitely review actual strains of pods and cartridges, as well as concentrates, you know, dabbles. And I'm really excited to, to talk about those. Some live resins we'll definitely dive into too. Uh, so I guess I should apologize for taking so much time off, but uh, I honestly just look forward to what we have coming. Um, I'm not really going to talk too much about the keto stuff anymore because I'm not really doing it. So I probably should reevaluate my channel. Um, but I might do it again. So I'm probably going to keep the name. And the cat is, well, right here, as I'm sure some, as I'm sure some of you heard um, him making noise in the background. And sorry that I'm in a very rough or makeshift, like, I don't know, studio. I just really wanted to get this video out there because it was something on my mind. And hey, what else do we have to do? It's still kind of quarantined. So. Thanks for watching uh, Kitties, Keto, and Kush. <laughs> Again, the name will probably just be Kitty, Kitties, and Kush soon, but uh, hey, you never know. Have a great day, guys.